It is Monday, July the 15th, 2024. I am James. You are you. We are here. After a one-week break, welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. Episode 490. One more time. 490. 490. We're about roughly, depending on what type of frequency we air this show, about two months away from the 500th episode of the show. Now, usually I say the show that won't go away. I think I'm now going to rephrase it as the show that can't go away. It's been a number of weeks in which I've been starting this show saying, what's the point? Why do we do this anymore? Is anyone watching? Does anybody care? It's at the point that I don't care if anyone cares. This show is a part of me. It is like an important appendage. It's like a finger. It's an arm. It's a leg. Heck, it may as well be the noodle hanging in between my legs. That is how important this show is. Some people I know are married. I ain't married. Some people I know have kids. I ain't got no kids. This show functions as my wife and my child simultaneously. The best of both worlds. Some people out there are probably thinking, I wish that my wife could be my child or I wish that my child could be my wife. Have less money to spend on more family members if I could consolidate it into one. I found the life hack. Start an internet show. Decree that they are both your spouse and child. And that, my friends, is what has brought us here tonight. But I come to you on a somber note. Over the weekend, we lost the one and the only Dr. Ruth legendary and renowned sex therapist. For those of you who have been hanging in since 2020, you know that Ruth has played an important part in the folklore of this show. It was September 2020 when Dave Kaufman took over to present Dave Kaufman's Ruth Booth, the game of good sex. We've done it a handful of times since, and tonight... We honor, we celebrate the life, the times, the legacy of Dr. Ruth by reinstalling the Ruth booth. But in order to visit the Ruth booth, you need a number of people to join as one. And that's what we're doing tonight. So if you're out there watching from your bed, your bathroom, or beyond, and you're asking, well, who's playing tonight? I got an answer for you. Let us meet tonight's esteemed guests and players as part of Dr. Root's Game of Good Sex. Dave, open the gates. Wow. This is an all-star cast. Let's begin. Dave, in just a few moments, I'm giving you the reins. Hello, James. Welcome back. How are you doing today? We were not, we were not here last week. We were not here last week. Uh, I was on vacation. <clears throat> Well, Thomas, it sounds like you're taking umbrage with that by clearing no, your no. throat. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the show. You were supposed to be here last Monday, but we were unable to uh, be here in our regularly scheduled time slot because of Dave's aforementioned vacation. Thomas, what say you? You know, I think you worked Dave pretty hard, and I think he deserves a vacation. And, uh... Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate that, and I think that you're right. Yeah. yeah, well, let's just get past the fact that you two have developed a little bromance on the show, dating back to Christmas night of 2023 when you both took turns shredding me, but that's neither here nor there. Speaking of vacations, Marilyn, welcome back. You're about to go on vacation, but you have carved out a bit of time to be here on this very important edition of the At Home Show. Marilyn, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Very excited about this. I like your background a lot. It's a little salacious, a little cheeky, but still very tasteful. Wow. Well, thank you. Well, now the pleasure is all mine. Hmm? Well, we've done it again. Last 
but certainly not least. Oh, wait, do you hear that? It's the first time guest alarm. Meng, you're making... Making your debut on the At Home Show, and you yeah! and celebrating Dr. Ruth. Yeah, 21 gun salute. <laughs> You're also celebrating fitness guru Richard Simmons that we also lost over the weekend. Welcome to the show for the very first time, Ming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was looking for the craft service table. Did yep. not find it. Did not find it. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Pour myself a glass of water. I'm going to have Dave cook you dinner. Thank you. What do you like to eat? Chinese food. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're Jewish. You know how to cook Chinese food. I know how to eat oh, Chinese food. <laughs> wow, Meng is already starting off hot. First appearance. I like Chinese food. Dave, you're Jewish. You know how to cook Chinese food. <laughs> Dave, you've been left flabbergasted and flummoxed. I'm fine. I, I enjoy I've, I've I've attempted numerous times to you're make Chinese food. You're stuttering and stammering all over your words. Oh, come on now, James. Let's uh let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I've yeah, got a show big, us your pitch. Show I've got a big pitch. competition to host uh soon. So my mind's focused on that. Uh Dave, yeah. our first time guest has a request. Show us what? Your pits. My armpits? Yes, to prove you're not sweating. <laughs> oh God! Imagine there's a we huge might have rash a strike against our channel after yeah. that one. Well, Dave, I now throw things over to you as the host of Dave Kaufman's Ruth Booth. Please, the floor is yours, my friend. Uh, well, welcome everybody, welcome uh, contestants, and welcome viewers at home, if there are any. Uh, this is Doctor Ruth's game of good sex. Now you can uh, know that this game. It's created by one and only Dr. Ruth, who recently, uh, you know, passed. At the ripe old age of 96. Yeah, she it. lived a full, beautiful life. Full, beautiful life, full of sex and sex advice. I hope so. Anyway, in 1985, the year that I was both consummated and born, uh, she came out with this. Dr. Ruth's... Game, you can't really see it. Oh. <laughs> game of good no. sex. It's a board game, and it's full of uh, excellent, titillating questions, of which I'm going to try to stump some of the contestants here tonight. Anyway, uh, so it's a product of its time, let's just say. So some of these questions might be a little bit, uh, you know, risque. But here at the At Home with James show, uh, we're not afraid of risque. In fact, we confront it head on. <laughs> Question. Uh, this is not the question period of my intro, <laughs> but I will allow it. Go ahead. Ooh, is there any uh, uh, sexual prizes that we win, like some sort of lubricant or toy? Yeah, Dave. Are there any sexual prizes? I've got. I a... need to be motivated. Yeah, I've got some lubricant. I've got. <laughs> you're, you're each gonna win. The winners will win. Uh, a handful of lube. lube. Oh, so like a handful, like it's a handful of candy that you might get on yeah. Halloween night while trick or treating. Yeah, yeah. Follow up question. Follow up question. Okay, sure. The floor is, is... open for questions. <laughs> is this real lube, or is this some sort of cooking oil situation we're talking about? Um, well, you know, uh, I don't use cooking oils lube. I use uh, water soluble, uh, potentially uh, <gasps> spermicidal. Uh, a jelly. Nice. Oh, well, nice. Dave, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, if you were to use a cooking oil as lube, which would you use? Well, Vegetable, uh, canola, or olive? I mean, uh, I would open it up, James. Maybe go to avocado. Because right. uh, yeah. Yeah. it has a high yeah. smoking point, and it's not a seed oil. And despite the fact that I know for, that seed oil uh, uh, negativity is conspiratorial, uh, I still enjoy an avocado oil as my... High smoking point oil of choice. Uh, Thomas, do you have any questions for Dave as it pertains to lube or his use of lube? I'm just wondering if he uses the same oil for lube and Chinese cooking. <gasps> Good question. Is it? Yes. <laughs> like, are we like? Do you also like peanut oil because it's a high smoke point and can be used for Chinese cooking? I mean, peanut oil is a, a quality oil, but you know, you uh, run the risk. What if of, your uh, lover has an allergy? Exactly, to you run the risk of uh, of mm. triggering an allergy if you have guests over. 
Uh, Marilyn, any final questions for Dave as it pertains to lubricants? Oh, I just want to state coconut oil. Yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately, this isn't the statement portion of the show. It's oh, sorry. An open question. <laughs> sorry, Marilyn. Portion of the show. Uh, Dave, how is tonight's game show going to unfold? So it's a uh, it's a two round game. Oh. Uh, but maybe I'll throw in a third round. Uh, and uh, the rules are malleable. <laughs> if I get a good right. rule suggestion, then I will open up the game for a further round of sorts. All uh, right. I'm gonna let me allow me to play the official Doctor Ruth. Theme song. Okay. All right, that's enough of that in case we get a strike. It sounds really familiar. I think you have to clarify that there was an online version of this game, like a computer version, but you showed the box, but in the, your background, there is that computer version of that game. Sure, sure. I, I guess I can You know what? It's that. true. Yeah, it's there... true. I never noticed that. If I didn't realize they made the computer me, version. Uh, Dr. Ruth, and she's playing a computer. And this was, of course, Dr. Ruth's computer game of good sex, which is an entirely different game. And it was available on one five and a half inch floppy diskette. For the Apple II 48K computer with disk drive. All right, Dave. What are the teams tonight? The teams competing will be uh, James McGee and Meng. Yeah. And Thomas and Marilyn. And I yeah, I noticed I'm here. the only one that got last name billing. That's right. Well, I feel like I didn't want to confuse you with any other Jameses on the show. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, as uh, in the words of the crass test dummies, uh, let's begin. <laughs> All right. Uh, you'll notice that in the first round, we are going to be asking true or false questions. Now, you understand what true and false is, yes? Any questions mm -hmm. on that? Uh, true if it's correct and false if it's incorrect. And uh, these questions, uh, as you can see here, are separated into blue and pink the male questions and the female questions. So I will be asking the male member of the team the male questions and the female member of the team the female questions. Because I already want to suggest that for round two we should flip that. I was about to make the same exact suggestion. I think that could be a fun treat. All right, we'll add a flipped round. All right. Cool. All right, let's begin. He really wasn't kidding. The rules and the game is very malleable. <laughs> Rule fluid. Yes, it is rule fluid. Well, Dave, who's the first question for? First what question is a female question, and it's going to be uh, to Meng. Yeah! You ready, Meng? I am. So remember, you can answer this true or false. True or we'll false. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Let's see. True or false. A person who seduces members of both sexes is known as a transducer. That's clearly false. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yes, but but I, I when I answer true or false, I also I, li I like to add a couple of explanations, you know. So I feel like it's Not false. relevant they, to the they game. They are bisexual. <laughs> they could be pansexual. I think this also is that's not a real... man. You gotta put yourself back in nineteen. Now this is someone. It's not someone who enjoys the company of men or women. It's a uh, a person who seduces them. Are they a transducer? Transducer. Okay. Um. Like Remember, a not so You gotta put ourselves now. in the time machine of nineteen eighty five. We we got a point on the line here, Meng. Hold on. Think for a second. Wow, this is this is bringing everything into question for me. I'm still gonna go with false because I feel like that's not a real word. False is that my that is word. correct, but also incorrect <sighs> in a sense because a transducer <laughs> is a real world word. It's an electrical device. Wait, so do <laughs> we get the point because it the answer is correct, or are we wrong because Meng said it's not a word? Uh, well, you know, it's a uh, point five. All right. <laughs> oh, God damn it. You added extra information, but those details were incorrect. <sighs> All right. We got to keep it concise, Ming. But look, okay. we're on the board with a half point. Here's a question for Thomas In the lead. Barnwell. Hitting your mate 
striking them is a legitimate way to release anger against the person. Now remember, Thomas, it's 1985. 19... And you know, I... <laughs> I stopped growing emotionally. <laughs> Those that were your tracks. peak sexual years, correct? That is correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, they ended in 1984. But <clears throat> I would say that... Uh... Wait, can I have the question again, please? Sure. <clears throat> Hitting your mate no. is a legitimate way of releasing anger against the person. I know this is going to come as a shock to James, but the answer is false. That is wait, wait, wait. But like, is it like mate? As like, hey, mate, like your mate, like Meng, your you're going to cost us that half point. <laughs> Meng, does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going. Could be a shipmate. Uh, yeah, false is correct. Hitting or abusing another person, even in marriage, is against the law. <laughs> If you are really angry, take a walk around the block and cool. Yeah, Thomas off. is right. That does that does surprise me. Yeah. Even in marriage. Even in marriage. Let me, uh, let me keep a tally of these points. I, I've got a tally going on here as well. Currently, mm -hmm. Marilyn and Thomas are beating Meng and myself one point to one half point. All right, James, can I assign you as the uh, the talisman of the... Uh, sure, yes, uh, I'll be the talisman. All right. Here's a question for you, Mr. Talisman. One second. A couple having trouble with intercourse may be advised by a sex therapist to stop having sex for a period of time. That I think this is the most complex question so far. Because mm. I think there's there's an argument to be made for both. But I'm, I'm going as I... I always have with the Ruth Booth gut instinct. I'm saying true. I'm saying that the therapist might suggest, well, take a break. Don't put pressure on yourself. Let it happen organically. I'm going to say true. A a sex therapist would suggest taking a break from from attempting intercourse. Is that what happened to you, James? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to suggest maybe if he does think this is true. Go ahead. If true. he does think this is true, that um, uh, if he ever feels that way about his show, you know, that's also perfectly okay. You're not wrong about that. <laughs> now, man, you got to be careful because you might lose yourself more points. Damn it! <laughs> uh, it is true. The sense of duty to have intercourse <laughs> is not always helpful to a couple, and they feel a burden lifted if told to stop for a period of time. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Very healthy. All right, Marilyn, this is a question for you. You ready for this? I think so. All right. A man who, after <gasps> ejaculation, <gasps> regains his erection or fails to go completely limp is not truly satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> who farted? <laughs> I think it was Meng. I don't know if that's going to cost us a point. <laughs> that is half a point. No! <laughs> We've been docked half a point because you believe that someone passed gas. No passing of the gas on Dr. Ruth's Game of Good Sex. All right, so now we're tied. One to one. One one. Wait, I didn't answer. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. Hold don't on. Don't worry. I know you didn't answer. Okay, so my answer is going to be false. And I want to say, you go, guy. <laughs> Just because, you know, he's got more in him to go, which is great. Amen. <laughs> that is correct. False. Many men have the capacity to regain an erection after climax, particularly if the afterplay is interesting. Ooh. Now, Dave, what would you consider interesting afterplay? I don't know if it had a cool narrative or something. <laughs> All right. What does that mean? Like a popsicle up the butt? <laughs> yeah, cool Dave. <laughs> is that a cool narrative? I mean, it depends. It is how summertime. It depends how it started. I want the hero's journey. Oh, okay. All right. 
two one. <laughs> that, that is, I, I have to confirm that that is correct. Here, here we go. This question is for James. All right. According to Masters and Johnson, a woman is considered frigid if she has sex less than three times a month. Accord now, this is according to Masters and Johnson. Well, this was a this was a big sex study. Yeah, and uh, I have a hard time believing that they would define a female as frigid if they only participated in intercourse three times a month. I'm going to say false. That is correct. False. All right, I'm going back to Maryland. We're doing a Wait, little bit. Wait, I want to know what is – you don't have the answer of what's considered frigid? We might look it up later. Masters and, and Johnson's. I don't think there's a number, Maryland. Okay. Oh, okay. That's just well, my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This guy behind me might think later. otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, so now we're flipping, the the, we're flipping to the other team? Yeah, yeah, we're going to flip to the other team. All right. Okay. All right. Again, it is malleable. It's fluid. All right, here's a female question. So this goes to Marilyn. A woman need concern herself only with the head of a man's penis because that's the most sensitive part. Ha! I like how these are female questions. The answer is false. Guys have so many sexy zones and they <laughs> want them all to be played with and touched. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's absolutely correct, Marilyn. Guys have so many sexy zones, and they want them all to be played with and touched. It says so here on this card. I'm uh, I'm going to make a declaration that, uh, Marilyn, moving forward, we're going to make you Dr. Marilyn on the show. <gasps> Whoa. Well, here we go. Uh, that brings me to the next round, which is Ask Dr. Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this question's for Meng. Meg, are you Don't ready? Screw up. Okay. Okay. A man has yeah. the right to veto his wife's choice of clothing if he believes it's too revealing in public. Ooh, the key word here being right. I don't mm. believe he has the right to, so I am going to say false, period, nothing else. Hmm. That nice. is correct. Good, concise answer. A man is not his wife's keeper. Although she should be truthful about his opinion. She should be truthful about his opinion. All right. This is the last of the. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last of the uh, questions of this round. And then we're you know, I feel be... like we maybe the, the better choice than I would have been having a tech and Dave, you just focus on hosting. <laughs> Why are you saying that, James? Well, just because I feel like you're you're splitting your focus. I am splitting and my focus. And that's difficult. All it right. It is a little bit difficult. Yeah. He's giving yeah, a break, right, James. I think I'm pulling You're right. Out. Yeah, Dave, you know what? Take a vacation next week. All right, thank you, James. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, in 80%... This is a question for who? For Thomas. Thomas. In 87% of the time, the only pleasurable way to have intercourse with a man is on top. <laughs> 87%? Yeah. <laughs> this might be the hardest one so far. I didn't think there was going to be any math. But, um, well, I'm just going to do the math. Uh, only 13% of the other ways are pleasurable. Would be, ple would be uh, pleasurable. For that includes woman. For a woman. Doggy, Missionary, Eiffel Tower, Power Slam. <laughs> And other such positions. Wait, what's the power slam? Power slam? You, know, you ever heard of the power slam? I can't say that I do. Oh, man. You I'm missing out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't watch enough uh, Greco-Roman <laughs> wrestling. Uh, I'm going to say false. The correct answer is false. There are many... Ways to have intercourse. All can be pleasurable. Except yeah, I, the power I want to quickly oh, jump it. in here with a, a bit of a, uh, a score keep. Currently, Thomas and Marilyn are in the lead with four points to Meng and Mai's 
three points. We would have had four points had Meng not overexplained and farted. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Meng. <sighs> so embarrassed right now. So embarrassed. I'm so sorry, James. All right. Okay, now, we're getting it back in there. This round, I'll be flipping the genders All in right. a very uh, modern way. And I'll be asking the male questions to the females. And the female questions to the males. <laughs> Alright, yes. first male question to Meng, the female. Yes! Yes! <laughs> A woman will never truly love a man until he performs oral sex on her. Oh my god! Well, I would say in 2024, yes, that's true. But the game is 1985, the year that Thomas stopped maturing. So, um, false is my final answer. False. Is correct. Yes. Apparently, each woman has her own sexual preferences. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> it says apparently on the card. Yeah. All right, here's a question for James. It's almost cheating this question for you. Oh, God. A man with one testicle can function as well sexually as a man with two. Well, this is this is a very interesting question because I guess you have one testicle. Well, yeah, this is why it's very interesting. Yeah, but now I'm back to two. <laughs> the other one, one reappeared. Mitosis. Um, <laughs> it was a man with only one testicle has the ability to still perform sexually as well. As well, yeah, I'm going to say true. I think they might have a difficult time. At least I'm going to assume they might have a more difficult time conceiving due to whatever production of sperm comes into play as it pertains to the testes. So I'm going to say true. Yeah, he can't. He can perform as well. True. He is still potent, and he can still have as much sexual desire. All right, we're racking up the points here, Ming. Yes, but also I have a question. I have a question. Dave, are we in a question um, period? Questions are allowed at this period. Okay, cool. Uh, this is wait, wait, I need to... to... Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, this question pertains to and is directed at James and his balls. Um, he said he had one, now has two. You mentioned mitosis. It, it, was it a mitosis situation, or did it go up and come back down, or was it some sort of plastic surgery situation? Well, uh, it's funny you ask that. We're going to be revealing the truth uh, in a week from tonight when I talk <laughs> about my mitosis in a one-hour Dateline special. I can't wait. Yeah. I will be 